Hi, welcome to the Potter's Roundtable. This is Pottery Shorts, a series of short pottery topics done on the fly. Hi, I'm Phil Bernberg. Today's topic is, how does a glaze strengthen a pot? Or does it? Well, it all comes down to this. It all comes down to either this, the coefficient of thermal expansion, which is also sometimes known as this, which also is the coefficient of expansion. This is a term that's used more by people that work with glass, where this is the abbreviation that's used more by potters, the CTE, the coefficient of thermal expansion. And this is a number that describes how much something expands or contracts when it's heated or when it's cooled. And so if you imagine at the end of a glaze firing, this is a little like a slice of a pot, and that's, so we've sliced down through the wall of the pot. So that's the glaze layer, and this is the clay. And so at the end of a glaze firing, as the pots start to cool, the liquid glaze coating on the pot freezes and solidifies, basically. And from there on in, you've got the hot, solid coating of glaze and the hot clay, both of which are continuing to cool. Now. As they cool, I've got to add another diagram here. As they cool, each one of them, each one of those layers, will contract according to its own particular coefficient of expansion. So di diagrammatically, you can th sort of think of it like this, that maybe, let's say these arrows represent how strongly it wants to contract. So what I've shown here is that maybe the glaze wants to contract a little bit more than the clay as it's cooling. But each one, as it's cooling down, each one of the layers, because they're different materials, contracts according to its own particular coefficient of expansion. Okay? And actually, that, that term is, it's really known as the coefficient of thermal expansion and contraction. Same thing. So, if, if as they're cooling down, if the, the glaze wants to contract a little bit more than the clay, then you end up with a situation that can look like this. Where the, and this, so this is the glaze layer now, and this is the clay. And if the clay wants to contract a little bit more, I'm sorry, if the glaze wants to contract a little bit more than the clay, then it's possible that the glaze can actually crack apart and split apart and shrink because it's trying to shrink more than the clay does. This is crazing. This is basically what causes crazing. On the other hand, if, the, if when they're cooling down, the, the clay and the glaze are contracting, and the clay wants to contract a lot more than the glaze, you can end up with this situation. There's the clay layer, where if the clay wants to contract a lot, it can actually con contract so much that it causes the glaze layer to separate and actually fly off the, 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 the clay layer. That's shivering. Okay? Those are the two extremes. But now, if I have a situation where, and I'll draw this again, if I have, this is my glaze layer again, and this is my clay. If I have a situation where the, the clay wants to shrink a little bit more than the glaze, not enough to cause the shivering, but a little bit more. So I'll draw these arrows in here again to sort of indicate, just indicate that this wants to shrink a little bit more than the glaze does. What it does is, it actually, the clay actually squeezes the glaze because the, the clay is shrinking and not enough to make it pop off, but it just squeezes it. And when it does that, that actually strengthens the pot. And here's why. Because, and I think we've touched on this in some of our other videos, but ceramics are actually strong in compression, which means that if I have a block of ceramic and I push on it, like this, these are like arrows indicating I'm squeezing it or I'm pushing on it. Ceramics are very strong like that. This is why we can build buildings out of bricks and concrete blocks, which are ceramic, because they're very strong when you press on them, when you squeeze on them. But they're not very strong in tension, so, which means like trying to stretch them out. So if I have a block of ceramics and, I, and, I, and I'm able to sort of try to stretch it, these are the arrows indicating the pull, what happens is a crack will open up. Because ceramics, are, this is tension. Ceramics are not very strong in tension, but they are fairly strong in compression. So, 
And this is, what, this, is what the, this is what's causing the problem. So if, in order for a glazed pot to break, a crack must open up on the surface of the pot. So if I have a pot, and I'm going to exaggerate the, the thickness of the wall, but here's, let's say, a pot, or this is the top of a coffee cup or something. If, if, in, if, the, if the forces on the outside can stretch the wall, then a crack can open up in the wall, like that. And so in, in order for the, the pot to crack, this, this, the surface much, must be stretched in order for this crack to open. But if I have a situation where the glaze is being squeezed by the clay, then it, it, I have to apply extra force to stretch, the, to stretch the glaze because it's being squeezed together. So the squeeze provided by the clay is actually counteracting the stretch that I need to crack it. And so it actually, in this way, the, 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 the shrinkage actually strengthens the pot. It's actually making the, it more difficult for a crack to form in the glaze. Okay? And incidentally, one other thing that's interesting, so in this case, so the pot is actually stronger if I have this situation where the glaze is, wants to shrink a little bit less than the, than the clay, or the clay wants to shrink a little bit more the, where the clay squeezes the glaze. So the, ins, the thing that's interesting about this also is the opposite is true, that if the glaze crazes, that actually weakens the pot, because now if the glaze is shrinking, it's tending to want to cause the clay to crack underneath it. And also, sometimes, and a lot of, this is actually true a fair amount of the time, the little cracks that you see in the glaze may actually extend down into the clay. So I've actually started to, even the crazing of the glaze has actually started to form cracks in the clay. So besides affecting the appearance of the glaze, where you can see the crazing, the fit, this is called the fit of a glaze, the fit of a glaze can actually do either one. It can actually strengthen the pot or weaken the pot. And that's it for this today's topic. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed the presentation, please like it and subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends. This way we get more viewers of our, of our videos. Also, check out our website, www.hfclay.com. We'd really like to thank our patrons for supporting our educational efforts, such as these videos. And if you'd like to consider becoming a patron, go to patreon.com and look for the Potter's Roundtable.